right, we're here with the first class boys. We got Leo and Jake here. Uh, for those who don't know, what do you guys do? And who um, are you? We're the, I guess, co-founders of First Class Fest, First Class Music Group. So we run um, like a traveling rap music festival here in Toronto, Montreal. We just did our first Canadian tour. So we did shows in like Vancouver, Calgary as well. Um, but pretty much, yeah, concert promoters here in mm -hmm. Toronto. Yeah, just like shows and we manage Kato's Eye. And like, yeah, honestly, that's just like shows for right now and festivals. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's like our main focus, but we're we're definitely going to like branch out. But for now, shows in the festival for sure. All right. And uh, when did you guys get your start? Um, in music? Yeah. In music. So I got my start in music. When I was in like grade 10, so that was like, I don't even know when that was, like 2017, 2018, probably. Probably, yeah. Yeah, around 2018, um, I had like a clothing line called Less Talk, and then like I would give it to a bunch of artists, so I, I gave it to like DC The Dawn, um, 24K Golden, just like Owen Young Tory. Young Tory like got me into the music shit. Okay. He like, he like, I started just like pulling up on him, giving him clothes, and like he would... He would, like, invite me to his shows and shit, and that just really... Like, I, I fell in love with the music more than the clothes, so I kind of started dropping that. But That's ever smart. since then, just been doing, like, one-off shows, um, like, traveling all around the U.S., just trying to do whatever, mm. and managing artists. Yeah. Yeah, then I, I got my start probably in, like, when just after high school, so, like, 17 years old, I was doing digital marketing for probably a year or two, and then linked up with Jake... And we did our first show is August 2022. So coming up on, yeah, it's 2024 just now. So like two years been mm -hmm. going at it. Um, not even quite, but getting close. So yeah. yeah. Like we, we made the, the, the festival idea came to fruition, like literally like the first five days we met. So we're something around that, like the yeah. first week we met. Yeah. So it's ever since then, which is two years ago, ever since then, it's just mm -hmm. been on like on go. Yeah. And you spoke about the the first festival uh, in 2022. What was it like booking that, at, like being new in town and being just a new festival? I mean, it definitely came with our own challenges it, for us to like being our first festival, like just, yeah, learning all the different like logistical things, putting it together. But I definitely think it was a cool moment for the city, like bringing like at the time we did, it was Uno. It was so different at the time. Yeah. Like, it was a bunch of... It was like, it was all different fan bases, I feel like, because it was like, it was a really messy lineup. Like it was Uno the Activist, DC the Dawn, The Holiday, Young Tory, like it's it's all whole, like different, mm -hmm. Big Baby Gucci, it was all different people. Yeah. So I think it was like, like it brought, it brought a lot of different, um, just like audiences um, yeah. together that like normally wouldn't go to a show. Mm -hmm. Like now, now our shows are a little more like targeted. And we have like more like a, a little community, but before like that first show is really just like everyone popping out like what the fuck is this? Yeah, just trying to make a statement almost. Exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 And oh, that's hard. Th that first one is just like people that we like listen like to listen to. Like it was mm -hmm. just like people that we had like contacts to and that we were already talking to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like uh, you guys made the connection with Big Baby Gucci there, and then uh, you ended up on stage with him for Rolling Loud. What was that like? That was crazy. Like. It, it, it was so random too we were just like um so when gucci came to town he like asked me to just kind of like set up a little team for him like videographers photographers and a bunch of mm -hmm. so he took us all to rolling loud and then when we got on stage he was just like you want to hype him up and i was like yeah so he just gave me the mic and i just went yeah. to hype him up but it was lit That's like great. gucci's like one of the craziest performers he's got yeah. energy yeah yeah, no, I remember being there. That was cool as fuck. Because at the time, I didn't quite know who you guys were. Mm. I knew I went to First Class Fest, but I didn't I didn't know who ran it, whatever. Yeah. And then I saw you, and I was like, oh, shit, wait, I recognize him. <laughs> like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Spraying everyone with water. Yeah. You sound like, just as lit. You look like a performer. So. <laughs> Bro, oh, there's anyway. no ways, man. It's actually on Bro Blocks. Anyways, uh, from there, you guys then had uh, one tra uh, first track fest mm -hmm. in Montreal. What was that like? Who came up with the idea to partner with one track and do all that? Well, one track was, um, I mean, we already just knew Josh. Like, obviously, Shaq manages him. Mm -hmm. We were close with. And then Josh had pulled up to the first first class fest and was, like, doing some content. And then when we had 
decide to do the next festival in Montreal is just kind of like a no-brainer. Cause, yeah. You know, he's based out there and he's got like a solid, really solid community of like underground fans out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the artists we had ended up doing, we actually did DC the Dawn as the headlining for, for that next festival, mm-hmm. the first track fest, because he wasn't able to come to Toronto. He got COVID like last minute. So DC is also like I think one of Josh's favorite artists, so it yeah. just kind of made sense, and it was like yeah, r- it real was authentic. His, it was his like first show ever, and he he was like talking about it for a while. We were like, I remember we were talking to him about it for a while too, because we wanted to do something in Montreal, and like he he's been talking about doing his first show for the longest time, like on his story and all that before that came to. Um, so we just like we we linked up with him, and yeah, like like. Like uh, Leo said, DC was his favorite artist, so he mm-hmm. was like, let's do it. We also yeah. just, like, yeah, Ben had a good relationship with Josh, and it just, like, it just made sense, that one. And he definitely, you know, him being from Montreal helped a ton with, like, you know, the whole show. And then we actually did another one with him, too, which was Killy and Joe mm-hmm. Kenji, like, yeah. not, not too long after. So definitely, yeah, be on the lookout for some more shit in Montreal, too, mm-hmm. soon. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, when did the stage diving start? Um, cause that's crazy. That started randomly too. I was in Arizona for a show that I was throwing. One of my, I think this was actually one of my first or like my second show ever. It was a NASCAR Aloe show in Arizona, like Phoenix, Arizona. Just it was during like the whole COVID shit, mm-hmm. so like people couldn't do shows here. So I just went there. I went to Florida to try and do one there, and then like my second one was in Phoenix, and um. Yeah, we were just all there for the weekend, and then Snot. I actually know we we knew Keyshore. I don't know if you know who Keyshore is. He's like one so. of our homies, but okay. he was opening for Snot. Oh yeah, and yeah. like Snot was in town, so Keyshore brought us on stage with him to open for Snot, and like that was the first one ever. I just like I think someone else did it that was on stage with us too, and I was just like, oh, and I just like followed and did the same thing, <laughs> yeah. and then like every show since then that i've been on on the stage like i try mm-hmm. to just like jump no nah, it's it yeah. is crazy it's a staple in the in the community now yeah definitely and everybody like, wear your helmets yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah for real. everyone gotta wear your helmets bring your helmets uh who's one artist you guys have been able to work with so far like who's what sorry who's one artist you guys have been able to work with so far that you, like years ago before you even started was like you would have never dreamed of um let me think of that I mean, I guess, like, when I first got into the music industry, like, all of them, like, mm-hmm. all of these artists that we've worked with so far, like, Uno, like, even The Holiday, like, when I was, like, I think, like, in grade 8 or grade grade 9 or something, like, The Holiday was on, like, when, when he first came up with all the internet money tracks and stuff, I was, like, a big fan of him back then, and, like, even Young Tory, like, even though I've been doing shit with Young Tory for hella long, like, I was a fan of him before mm-hmm. I started doing anything with him. So, yeah. just, like, all these people, yeah. really, like, everyone we book, we're fans of. Mm-hmm. So, really, just, like, all of them, mm-hmm. to be honest. Yeah. I'd say for me, probably, like, the number one, like, most surreal one, probably Killy, because just because growing up in Canada, like, he's always yeah. been just a legend, like, when we were in high school and stuff. And, like, the fact we booked him in Montreal, and then he also was a special guest um at our last festival here mm-hmm. in toronto which was cool because he hasn't done a show in toronto in time so it was like just a cool opportunity for us to like mix the underground american acts we're already bringing and have like a canadian mm-hmm. like legend that's solidified in the game come perform too and then i mean dc the dawn i used to listen to a bunch in high school like like he said amiri dom like all guys we listen to on the day. Yeah. So Kelly's it's been in like every first class. Too. Yeah, even the yeah. first one we did, he was in the green room chilling yeah. and uh So he's he's a real first class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a goat. Who out of the underground are you excited for uh or excited to see grow in twenty twenty four? Twenty twenty four. For me probably the number one artist I've been listening to right now is until Japan, who's like super fire. Mm-hmm. Hard rock I think is gonna go super up this year. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Amiri, we were just talking about off the camera, is already on its way. Like, he's going to be, I guarantee by the end of the year, like a mainstream level artist. Mm-hmm. Um, four or five, I'm excited about. Brizo is one that I've been listening to. He's like definitely on the smaller side, but I think is so far. I think yeah. he's going to go super up this yeah. year, too. Um, Yeah, like Rich Amiri is one that we've always been saying is going to blow up. Like, even the last 
like before the last show. Um, so he definitely Richard Mary is gonna have a big ass year. Um, who else? Osama's son obviously is gonna have a crazy year. Um, four five is gonna have an insane year. He's gonna blow up. Mm-hmm. Um, until Japan definitely is also gonna blow up. So yeah, I think Dev Stack's going yeah. hard. He just had like three singles that were like yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, I personally really fuck with Jade's too. Like Jade's had a big year already, or like 2023, he had a big year. So I think if he keeps releasing stuff, he's gonna go up. Yeah. Kato number one though. Oh yeah. Kato, uh, oh, 2024. <laughs> I literally had that in the question. Yeah. Other than Kato. Yeah, other than Kato <laughs> yeah, no cap. Uh, but uh, what is your advice to uh, a smaller artist trying to get booked? Trying to get booked? Yeah. Uh, not on, not only on first class, but like yeah, any just show. A show. Yeah. I'd say one like on just like a real tip like i'd say don't spam like on social media and try to just meet the people throwing the show in person and like just like develop a genuine connection with them like besides kato like a lot of the a lot of the artists we we put on our shows like from toronto like moss and wave are a great example of people we just genuinely fuck with for like a while now and, and like we, we put them on our first show and they just like killed it like yeah not on our first like we no, yeah like we like on their it was on, their, like yeah they're kind of first, first show with them, with them. Mm-hmm. yeah exactly and they they like they brought energy to the first show but we were like genuinely cool with them for like months prior to even mm-hmm. like doing anything on like a working relationship yeah. um and i'd say the other thing too like once you get obviously it's hard as like a smaller artist but any way you can prove to a promoter because it is like a business at the end of the day too that you're gonna bring people through the door and that you're gonna have amazing performance like just i'd say yeah like just showing that people genuinely want to see you perform like if you can imagine from a promoter's perspective if you're an artist from toronto or like from anywhere for example and you don't have a major following like why would a promoter Mm -hmm. book you and that's really what you have to prove to them like whether it's in person or over a text or or however it's going to be but like show like what your value is going to be so you can sell yeah show you can sell or like like I remember, yeah, yeah, just show, like, what's unique about you compared to, like, you know, mm-hmm. other artists that are also trying to get booked. Mm-hmm. And the music should just be fire, too. Yeah, like, I feel like there's so many artists, like, that are on this or in the same position that are also trying to get booked. And, like, the number one thing I say is don't spam every promoter. Don't don't try and, like, yeah, like, don't try mm-hmm. and be on their ass about getting a show work on your own like songs and like try and create your own motion before you even want to go perform like performing yeah Yeah. that's the yeah ideally you want to get promoters to come to you like the the whole point you want to start your own wave you want to have people you don't want to it's a way of promotion yes or a way of marketing is to go out there and perform but in my eyes you don't want to go out there and perform if you don't have fans that are there waiting for you to perform yeah. like worry about getting people to enjoy your music first and they're like and they, they want to hear it live mm-hmm. so yeah just like work on that yeah i was gonna say i feel like like the culture right now is like everyone's dying to perform live and i like i'm not an artist myself but i could imagine be like obviously hella fun and cool to go up there and perform but dude i love it i'm not an yeah artist, but i love yeah that yeah shit. but like i think spending a year like just focusing on your music focusing on your image focusing on your content on social media networking with people in the industry like building yourself to a point where you know even 50 people like that's a lot of people in one city coming out to watch you perform if you can get that amount of people to pop out like then you're a no-brainer to get booked by mm-hmm. a lot of these promoters. You yeah. know, you're bringing 50 people to a show that's big, even yeah. at like a 500 that's cap show. Really, so yeah. it's really big. Mm-hmm. So just taking some more time to build yourself to a point where like it makes sense too. I'd say. And uh, we were talking a little bit off camera as well of the last festival, how th- every artist on there has literally popped off since. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's a testament to your ability to stay tapped in. How do you guys stay tapped in? I mean, first of all, I like Jake and I just genuinely like listen to all these guys. So I feel like we're always on the hunt for like, whether it's just on SoundCloud, like Spotify recommended, like shit just pops up on our Instagram too, I think, because just follow like a lot of different managers or different like pages and stuff like that. But I think when you genuinely like the music, then you're you're just going to be inclined to like want to hear more and try to find who's like, who, who you really like. Um, yeah, and like. Like, for me and Leo, I feel like we're just a part of the scene, too. Like, 
and like you too all these people that come to all these shows and like the more you come to these shows and the more you get like warped into this community you start just seeing all this shit around you on instagram yeah and like um and like i mean for the past two years that's just like we what we've been doing like Mm -hmm. we're a&rs yeah we just that's our job like we're we're just on spotify on instagram we're just trying to see trying to find new talent like every mm-hmm. day yeah. yeah i'd also say like a lot of the upcoming like i like the underground scene right now because it seems like a lot of artists once they get to a point where they're kind of bubbling in the scene like they start collaborating or at least like popping up on people's like radar mm-hmm. pretty easy like you don't even yeah. have to be that big if you're really fired like people genuinely like you so if you're following a lot of people in the underground and like someone starts going up there's gonna be reposting yeah. their stuff they're gonna be popping up like yeah. and then yeah and then just taking the time to go listen mm-hmm. to their shit too beyond just like yo this looks cool like. and what's uh what does 2024 look like for first class i'd say 2024 looks like yeah like we we have our biggest festival to date coming up on april 18th which is going to be at the phoenix concert theater oh, which shit. is like a 1300 cap so about double the size of our last festival yeah. and i think the lineup definitely reflects that so it's going to be like a lot of new names a lot of big names Mm -hmm. um yeah besides that we have like three other shows right now we're planning over like the next three months aside from the festival too Mm -hmm. um that we won't speak on quite yet yeah but do you want to one one that we're gonna speak on is there's a free one coming up we're we're about to do a free show yeah like a really big free show i'm not gonna say date or anything but yeah Mm -hmm. that one's coming up yeah it's gonna be definitely like the biggest biggest free show that like canada has seen for the underground for sure yeah and then i'd say also just like you can expect in 2024 just like an overall uh what's the word not involvement involvement just like the the rollouts and, mm. and content that we want to be doing around first class fest like our team's just getting stronger we're just getting stronger as promoters and like there's a lot of things we want to we want to include like in the overall image of first class fest just to you know keep the momentum going and like really establish ourselves like as top promoters yeah 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 no that's that's hard uh you guys are doing well it's hey, doing appreciate good it, bro yeah um it's now time for the in the interview for the snake draft yeah uh our topic today is artists that need to come to canada in 2024 okay uh who wants to go first i can go first all right and then we'll go with jake me so they haven't been here yet uh yeah. or at least not like recently not frequently yeah yeah, I'd say number one right now has got to be Osama's son for for because he's just like so bubbling like in our niche right now so yeah no, you're going true. through <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro's doing that. research <laughs> it's like why man why not Osama's son <laughs> damn uh, fake bro um four bats boom four bats four bats that's, that's that interesting is? no I don't four bats is like he has like these two songs out right now yeah, hold on, let me, like I'm gonna R&D play it, I'm gonna like play it for Oh, guys. shit. Alright, my pick, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I thought you were gonna say Fago or something. Fago's been here, bro, he's coming too. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say, uh. I don't know if he's been here, but I'm gonna say Hard Rock because I, I want to yeah. see Hard Rock. He for opened sure. for Lancey, but it was like, it was like last minute. Like, oh, like yeah, yeah. Year, like, I don't even yeah. think that many people even knew about mm-hmm. it. Hard Rock's a good... I'm Give next, me the bro. Give me the light. Wait, wait. Did he not say... I'm redoing mine. Oh, you're redoing mine. Yo, I'm redoing mine. He's redoing it. It's his second I'm redoing mine. I'm redoing mine. Mine is Jade's. Okay. Okay. All right. No diss to four bats, bro. We want to bring you out. We want to bring you out. First R&B show. And my second... My best second pick is gonna be B Jax because I, I just B-Jax, really like that yeah, shit. Yeah, that'd be hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, yeah. B Jax. Yeah, he'll be over here. Yeah, he'll be over. Here. Okay, now it's you. The way the draft works. Oh, I get another one. Yeah, yeah. fuck. That's the snake, and then I get two. Yeah. Um, we'll do Skywater. Skywater. Ooh, good. fire. Skywater. Now you get two. Okay, I want to bring it until Japan for sure. Oh yeah. And uh, Yapo, Yapo, JJ. Okay. Or Fimi, Fimi Guerrero. Nah, Wait, that's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll say Yapo in Japan. Okay, okay. So now it, it is what? Now it's I'm gonna yeah. go a fi- Oh, do I get another one? Yeah, a it's real used. one. I was about to say a fake one. Um, 
KC. KC, okay. KC, yeah. KC yeah. and Riz Lovey collab show. Facts. Yeah. yeah. Mine's a little off the board. It's not so underground, but I want a redemption art for Lil Skies. That rolling, li- that rolling loud set scarred me. I'm such a big fan of Skies, so like, that that's that set scarred me. The fact he got bad publicity and shit. Facts. Uh, and then I also want Tana back Tana, from because yeah, ro- that tough. also that rolling loud set was fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tana would be super yeah. tough. The West G. <laughs> we get the camera. <laughs> what? I think it's Jake now. Is it Jake? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Are we doing a starting? We're doing five. Yeah. yeah. Starting five. Oh, that. So like oh, like a, yeah, like a little I'm basketball team. Yeah. I got four. <laughs> what was mine it's again? getting competitive now. <laughs> okay, so I need a tall person. <laughs> 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 They're not actually playing basketball though, huh? Right, Bro, okay. Bro it's needs a big to man. <laughs> Breakins, I really like Breakins. Oh, okay. But he's not really like even Bro, underground, <laughs> but like <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Bro, it's a it's a <laughs> dynamic Jade, squad. Eight <laughs> times two. Yeah. Fuck a rapper, apparently. Now, um, now Leo's got two. <laughs> I got two. Yeah. Damn. I show speed. <laughs> speed, no. <laughs> 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 um. Nah. nah, yeah, for sure, no. Um, who am I gonna pick? Who am I gonna pick? Um, BK the ruler. Ooh, do I get two? Yeah. Is this your final? I mean, pick? Ken Carson needs to come, but like he's. Yeah. I don't even know if we call him underground anymore. Uh, he's or Lancey. I don't even know if we call him underground. I'll go a big one for my last one. Lancey or Ken both need to mm. come back. Yeah. Or can yeah, yeah come but back. Lancey was just here, wasn't he? Like a couple yeah, months ago. Yeah, but he's like, bro, he's growing it. <laughs> <a new laughs> Ken. 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 Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um. <laughs> Jake's last pick. Summers. Summers. Okay. Summers. Yeah. Why do you play like that? Yeet. 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 <laughs> uh, and then my last pick. Um. Uh, I have a list here. Uh, fuck it. I'm gonna say Tory Lanez. Uh, by yeah, extradition, yeah. <laughs> uh, come back. They don't free want Tory. him. Free they Tory. don't want him. So free him and free Tory. We just get, get bro, him back to us. Like would be unreal. Bro, imagine the comeback set. In Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> in Hamilton. Megan the Stallion special guest. <laughs> Twenty dollar tickets in Hamilton. That'd be gnarly. Yeah. It's cheap tickets, but you gotta commute. Yeah, yeah. you gotta commute. Uh, but I, I appreciate you guys coming up. Uh, and uh, doing this shit. Yeah, Hard appreciate you having us, bro. Like, uh, just want to say too, the platform's been going crazy, yeah. so it's we're happy it, to yeah. be on. Yeah, yeah you're my only last up. Pick. You're my last pick. <laughs> <laughs> only up. You're my first pick, bro. <laughs> Flip the camera. <laughs> Amir, <laughs> Amir come say what's up to the people. Amir, we need a sign off. We need a first here. class. Si- this is our head financial advisor. We, yeah, we, we've, we've got uh, Amir's only pick for the draft. We've got Amir's only pick for the draft here. R. Kelly. Uh, yeah, I'm going to zoom in on that. Um, but yeah, where can people find you guys? Uh, uh, Toronto. First Class Fest or FC Music Group on Instagram. And then my personal is Leo Strang. His Larry Jake. Larry. Larry uh, Jake. Larry Jake. And that was the first class interview. Yeah.